Today on Ortho 2, we are going to be talking about Paleoloxodon. Paleoloxodon is an extinct genus of various species of straight tusked elephant. Many of them were quite large, possibly the largest terrestrial mammals ever, while others were quite small. They were very dominant when they were around and survived until relatively recently. Before we talk about how amazing these animals were, let's talk about their evolution first. The Paleoloxodon genus is made up of a handful of species. The first species, Paleoloxodon reci, appeared 4 million years ago in early Pliocene Africa. It was quite large. It stood 14 feet or 4.27 meters at the shoulder. The average African elephant of the modern day is only around 10 feet or 3 meters. Reki was also quite heavy. It weighed as much as 12.3 tons. Modern elephants are only as heavy as 7 tons. Reki was the dominant elephant in Africa for the Pliocene and most of the Pleistocene. Later it migrated out of Africa between 800 to 600,000 years ago. It would then diversify into the Eurasian species. These include P. antiquus, P. numidicus, and P. numani. The relationship these animals share evolutionarily is poorly known. Overall, through the whole of this genus' existence, there are eight species known to science. Since all these species are so different in size, the normal format for this show doesn't really work. So instead, we will be talking about every species individually. The first species we will talk about is arguably the most important. Paleoloxodon antiquus is a species that inhabited Europe and Western Asia. It lived from about 780 to 30,000 years ago. So yes, humans came across this animal quite often. It was 4 to 4.2 meters or 13 to 14 feet in height. It is estimated to be anywhere from 11.3 to 15 tons. That is 15,000 kilograms or 33,000 pounds. Quite large. It flourished in interglacial periods when its range could extend as far as Great Britain. During glacial periods, however, they retreated to the more suitable Mediterranean. It had a long trunk and long legs. With them, it is estimated that it could graze from trees as tall as 8 meters or 26 feet. It was originally classified as a subgenus of modern African elephants. Then for a long time it was considered a subgenus of the larger Elephos genus, but a 2007 study led researchers to abandon this hypothesis. A 2016 DNA sequence suggested that modern African forest elephants are closer related to Antiquus than they are to African bush elephants. Very interesting. A subsequent study published in 2018 indicated a more complicated relationship between straight tusked elephants and other species of elephants. It showed that the biggest genetic contribution to straight tusked elephants comes from a lineage of elephants that was basal to the common ancestor of forest and bush elephants. Their ancestors hybridized with members of the lineage related to extant African forest elephants and with a lineage related to woolly mammoths. It survived in northern Europe until 115,000 years ago and in the Iberian Peninsula until around 28,000 years ago. This species is important because not only was it dominant for a long time, it is thought to be the ancestor of the dwarf Paleoloxodon species. There are four so-called dwarf species found on islands in the Mediterranean. Surprisingly, elephants are actually really good swimmers. Though their feet are not the best at paddling, they are buoyant and their trunk acts like a snorkel. Once located on a remote island, the process of insular dwarfism kicks in. This amazing evolutionary process is caused by a few things. Limited resources is one. Even though some islands like Crete are quite large, elephants need a lot of food. Within only a few generations, the population would have expanded to the point where there just wasn't enough food for a bunch of 15-ton animals. Another reason is predation, or I guess the lack thereof. Elephants are only big to protect themselves from predators, and to compete with other herbivores. Modern elephants of a mature size are practically invulnerable to predators. But on an island with no substantially large predators, being small is advantageous. 
After all, a smaller baby means a shorter gestation period. And for an animal with a gestation period of almost two years, this is very advantageous. Throughout history, there have actually been many dwarf elephant species, and just in the genus Paleoloxodon, there were four. Paleoloxodon cheniensis was one of these dwarf elephants, but little is actually known about it. Its remains were found in a cave in West Crete. The African forest elephant is its closest living ancestor. Cyprus was once home to Paleoloxodon cyprioides. It is known from limited remains, but size estimates have been made. It was only about 200 kilograms or 440 pounds. The maximum height was 1.4 meters or 4.59 feet. This is a case of extreme insular dwarfism. It was 98% smaller than its ancestors that were a weight of at least 10 tons. Something I would like to note is that these elephants inhabited these islands after the Mycenaean salinity crisis. An event which saw the Mediterranean Sea nearly completely dry up. It ended 5.3 million years ago when the massive Zanclean flood filled the sea back up from the Atlantic Sea. Now this isn't that related to this video because it happened millions of years before, but it's amazing to think that such a huge sea dried up and then refilled in almost a biblical flood. I'm sure some hominins living in the basin were absolutely pulverized. Anyways, these elephants came to Cyprus long after this event. Though they still had to swim, glaciations made it easier to cross. Thankfully, Megalodon was long dead by this time, too. They survived on Cyprus until about 13 to 11,000 years ago. Not that long ago. They may have been a sizable and easy food source that was easily expended by hunter-gatherers. Man, have us humans ran into some weird beasts. Paleoloxodon falconeri was another dwarf species from Malta and Sicily. It was even smaller than Cyproites at 3 foot 2 or 96 centimeters in height. Though short, it weighed more than 305 kilograms or 672 pounds. Females were even shorter. This animal is thought to be the origin of the Cyclops myth. The people of Sicily found its skulls and assumed the hole used to attach the trunk may have been home to a single giant eye. Really interesting to think that an extinct animal actually did inspire such a legend. Another species that called Malta and Sicily home was Paleoloxodon monadriensis. This elephant was not as small as the other dwarfs. It was 1.8 meters or 5.9 feet in height with a body weight of 1100 kilograms or 2400 pounds. So not small, but still small by elephant standards. It is notable for not just being a smaller insular form, but a more distant species. There is debate about whether it is Elephas or Paleoloxodon. The last species of dwarf Paleoloxodon come all the way from Japan. Paleoloxodon namani is an extinct species that was endemic to the Japanese archipelago during the middle to late Pleistocene around 430 to 24,000 years ago. Though living all the way in Asia, it was still more closely related to African elephants than to Asian ones. It is interesting to think that if any of these Paleoloxodon were still on Earth today, they would be more similar to African elephants than to Asian ones. I find it interesting because it shows just how separate Asian elephants are, but we usually take this for granted. We just strap Indian kings on the back of them. Anyways, Namani was actually a pretty interesting species. Similar to mammoths that had a subcutaneous fat layer and long fur as an adaptation to a cold environment. The species had a pair of long twisted tusks and a bulge on the head. These tusks grew more than 2.4 meters in length and 20 centimeters in diameter. It was a little smaller than Asian elephants averaging 2.5 meters or 8.2 feet in height though somewhere larger. For some reason sources still considered a dwarf elephant despite its rather large size at about 6 tons. Maybe because it is thought to be a smaller form of perhaps the largest land mammal of all time. Paleoloxodon nemiticus may have been the largest animal since the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs. I say may because Paraceratherium was right up there in size. 
It is likely that they both hit a cap for mammals where gestation becomes too difficult to get much bigger. Due to incomplete remains, its true size is unknown, but several studies have attempted to estimate its size. One partial skeleton suggests a shoulder height of 4.5 meters or 14.8 feet. Two partial thigh bones have suggested a greater height of 5.2 meters or 17.1 feet. A height of 5 meters or a little over 16 feet was certainly attainable. That is absolutely massive. The upper estimates of weight put it at about 22 tons. That is nearly 50,000 pounds. If this estimate was accurate, then it would undoubtedly be the biggest land mammal of all time, but also exceeding that of many sauropod dinosaurs. The largest Paleoloxodon may have been nearly a foot taller and over five tons heavier than the biggest known Paraceratherium. It's alright though, Para. We still love you, man. It is accepted that it could definitely be 20 tons in weight, which is still massive. Paraceratherium was barely about this size as well. Some consider it to be a subspecies of Paleoloxodon antiquus, but this remains unclear. Regardless, many people call it the Asian straight tusk elephant as opposed to just the straight tusk elephant. It is notable for having an extremely large and robust head crest. All large Paleoloxodon have these crests for muscles to attach to move the head. Since the Mitticus had such a heavy head, its skull had a comically large crest. Also reminds me of some of our ancestors with large brows. Humans certainly encountered this towering beast, but may have been unable to prey on it. Sure as humans are cool and we can kill almost anything, even way back then, but its massive size would have made it about the most dangerous animal to hunt. Plus, with such a large size, even killing it would have been an immense task. It survived until at the latest about 24,000 years ago. That is pretty recent. Humans were probably in the Americas, some of my favorite paintings were already made, and most if not all other human species were extinct. We can only imagine what these ancient people, some the ancestors of you and I, thought of such goliaths. They were perhaps feared because male elephants are often violent. Perhaps they were so large that they did not even care about humans. They maybe even strolled right by them unconcerned. Regardless, their massive size must have been a sight to see. Maybe if they had survived to the modern day, the Indian army would have used them as powerful beasts of war. Maybe Alexander even would have lost the Battle of Hydaspes, because I can guarantee you that these elephants would have been far more effective. Actually, just kidding, Alexander could never lose a battle. But they reminded me of those massive elephants with six tusks from the Lord of the Rings. Except those are about 35 feet tall, but 17 feet's still pretty big, huh? We know a lot about these elephants, but they are still quite fragmentary in the fossil record. Hopefully future fossil discoveries reveal more about them. It may seem kind of weird that such a large animal that went extinct relatively recently has such a small trace in the fossil record, but listen to this. A calculation about fossilization was made and out of about 320 million people alive in the US today, only about 60 bones would fossilize. That's not even an entire skeleton of a human. Plus, that's not even the amount they would find. Many fossils get destroyed by geological processes and many more are just not found in the first place. It puts in perspective that we truly are lucky to discover each fossil we find. The straight tusk elephant would slowly go extinct throughout the world. The dwarf variety were probably easy pickings for hunting gatherers, while the large ones mainly died out due to competition and climate change. The last glacial period was exceptionally brutal and caused the extinction of Antiquus throughout much of Europe. Elephants in Europe were replaced by more well-suited mammoths, and a similar event happened in Asia. The African variety was replaced by modern African bush and forest elephants. They would go extinct but leave us with some fascinating bones and ideas about the past. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. Check out my Instagram and comment some video ideas down below. I make videos about history of humans, ancient animals, and the occasional full-length documentary. 
If that sounds interesting, check out the over 100 videos I have made. Well, I'll see you on the next episode of Ortho 2. See ya.